Live and direct from Coos Museum, Liechtenstein. It's TEDx Baduce 2013. Radically open. Okay, the reason I have charts is that there are standing facts I want you to know <clears throat> throughout the talk, and that is that uh, everything I do is based on art, and it's possible for this uh, so-called island, uh, Liechtenstein, and I will discuss with the PowerPoint as we go through it what's going on here in Liechtenstein so you can make it even more of a tax haven than it is now, and more importantly, you can be rich and avoid taxes by adopting certain behavior. The slogan is, oh, a gaz a tous les étages, from Duchamp, and is arguing that we can have water and methane gas, or yes, methane gas, uh, throughout our society. And that is uh, part of a, uh, um, an idea, idea from Joseph Boyce, also backed up by a, a US scientist, that we should have a constant circulation between methane gas, and that which goes on between animals and plants. CO2 and O2. So you have in the society, hard to remember, in the society a constant circulation of O2, carbon dioxide, and methane. So you have a methane cycle. Now I say this because a lot of talk now about whether we want to have methane or not, I say as long as it's in a living cycle, as long as it's everywhere here in Liechtenstein, it's great. Um, so we have OA gas, a tous étage. You have methane fuel, uh, biomethane by the way, Terrassenhäuser, that means uh, sloping cities that allow you to really receive from the land and into the, uh, go into the mountains. Lightweight water wheels, so you use water power to have uh, water power everywhere, really, with lightweight water wheels, not heavy structures. And an eco-tax, which I'll discuss and present to you as a way to avoid taxes by being ecologically correct. If, if you have property, and you manage your property ecologically, and have your lightweight water wheels, and you have your Terrassenhäuser set into the hill, and have methane fuel, you will not be paying any tax at all. So that's my plan. It only costs about 50,000 uh, Swiss francs to test. So I'm trying to sell my plan, too. Now, in this scenario of a Boisean fat corner, fat eka concept throughout Liechtenstein, we can do something with the hillside structures, but I'm not going to go into detail about that because that's all secret. Uh, I'm going to say we just cut into the slope. We have a zero profile. We don't have houses on the slope. We go into the slope, into the mountains, and we do this as a, for as a research project. Uh, so this is a kind of a secret. Uh, as I say, the ideas come from Dennis Oppenheim, Walter de Maria, and also is in Swiss architecture thinking. The main thing is that we will do that kind of secretly. When we, I won't show it anymore, and we'll get to the real uh, idea here that in Liechtenstein we were divided in three parts. One is the Rhine part, one is the Amina uh, stream part, and one is a small, small part that is only a mountainside uh, here by the um, Menbach, Men, Menbach canal, uh, 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 stream. The thing is that this country here is all basically a mountain sloping into a river and the river is creating a large mud field. And this mud field is, uh, well, a source of wealth. And the mountains are streaming and flowing into the mud field throughout this area, and they become essentially an erosion of wealth into the area, into the, into the uh, mud fields. But this is not being handled now. What's happening, happening now is that Liechtenstein imports 85% of its energy. It could be zero. And it could be zero through this kind of system. Uh, so, I've given you a summary. We're going to now get on to the sort of tour of Liechtenstein to give you some sense of what is possible here. Uh, let's go back to the beginning there. First, I did all this yesterday, and when I came in, I had entirely different ideas. I had no idea about the truth about here. I had thought that what happens is that the mountains flow into the river. Oh, no, 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 no. The river fills up that brown area, like a big delta, almost like an ocean. And it is a big floodplain, and it's very muddy. That's mud. So you have a lot of mud, which the mountains are not directly influenced. Rather, the mountains spill into, OK, some kind of delta fans here. But they really more just f f go into the groundwater. So you have a big kind of mud slop here. Uh, that's your lowland. And you have the mountains kind of standing like a big rock. 
What you do not want to do generally, and that's my point about building into the hill, is you do not want to be building into, onto the mud flats. The mud flats really should be staying uh, fertile, and they should be used as a source of tremendous wealth so you can get the methane and crops and other things so you can have local energy. Okay, so that's your real condition, which is muddy, muddy. And here's your real problem. It is that the, I guess I have to look at this, you have buildings spreading out onto the fertile mudplain. And they think, oh, well, I'll build during the flats. And you have this kind of situation of flat land being, uh, if I might use the word, abused by people settling on it when it really should be your fertility area where you grow products, don't you just sit on it. And when you have an eco-tax, that is to say a tax for every pixel in the area where you, identify, you would say, well, what is each pixel in the satellite image, and I'll show that to you a bit later, what is each pixel doing ecologically? And you say, well, it's occupied by a house or by a building, then it has zero value and you pay a high tax. To avoid taxes, you get out of the valley, out of the mudflat, and go to the hills. You run away from the valley, so to speak. Now, that's the kind of farming they do in the mudflats. Again, not very efficient. They're paying a very high tax. That could be much more fertile than it is now. Here's a factory. That factory could have been set back into the lands on the slope, but because of what they think is cheap land, they're abusing the land and preventing the possibility of, of Liechtenstein producing its own energy and becoming self-reliant. They're occupying fertile terrain. They're occupying this brown area, which should be essentially uninhabited, unoccupied. And you have, now what I'm trying to show here is a little bit the problem of imaging a body of land. When do you do it? Do you do it now when it's fallow? Do you do it later when the crops are in place? And this is what we have to give to Liechtenstein farmers. They have a choice. They can say, okay, I want you to evaluate my property ecologically um, at, say, in May. And satellites pass over about once, twice a month, or sometimes four times a month, depending on the satellite. And you say, okay, we're going to survey your property in May, and then we'll, there's going to be no clouds. And we will then say what your ecological productivity of your land is. And it would be it'd be in some kind of growth phase, and then say, okay, that's the value of your land, and if it's doing really well, you pay low tax. If it's doing really poorly, or it's covered by a building, or covered by blacktop, or has a runway, forget about it, you pay very high tax. So you want to avoid taxes by going to the hills. Get up out of the valley, and start living high above everything down there. The other resource to bear in mind is this, the canal, which is marked here, and this canal, which, I, again, I had to learn a lot. I thought the canal was kind of rigid and engineered. It's actually kind of natural. It has a little waterfall there. It's kind of moving along. It's had no real clear shore. I had wanted to have something I saw in Milan where you could build structures along a more rigid type of canal. This is downstream. But I, let's just say the canal could be a collector of nutrients from this whole region as they spill into or even come up from the, the groundwater along this path. So you have a kind of collector of nutrients for the whole region that could then be, again, a, a source of biofuel, uh, i.e. methane, to supply the cars. You have 24,000 cars here. That is a kind of general scenario of the kind of structure to place in a canal as a rotating pentagon and as it collects the biofuel. Um, you want to, uh, to make it worthwhile, have about 100 tons a day of collection, now, I don't know what's going to happen here in this canal. I do know that in Milan, in the main canal there, designed with Da Vinci, you can get that yield, about 100 tons a day. There's a lot of vegetation pouring down. This is me doing this kind of work on, on a lake. In, and uh, I'll tell you, when I did that very primitive, simple-minded, cut the plant, take it away, I found that I could produce all the electricity and gas I needed for a month in two hours. So the point is that people here can do that in the canal or in other standing bodies of water. And there are a few uh, here and there throughout Liechtenstein. And the idea is to build up collection areas for biomass as it flows down from the hills. They do this now. They put it in bags. And they use it to feed cattle. I'm saying you should do that instead. Have tanks in your house and many houses here where you collect the excess biomass and you have oegas at Toulouse-Etage. You have gas. 
the technique for making the gas is actually fairly well known now, and it could become a local industry and make Liechtenstein energy independent and not to have that kind of dependency. Now we're going to go up into the hills, come out of this valley. This is unit number one, that's the Rhine area. And we're going to go into another valley, which is snowy. Right now, snowy. That was yesterday. And uh, they're plowing the streets already. And that's the Amina Tal, the Amina Valley, here. And while this is very occupied by people, this is very empty of people, but it has a lot of hydroelectric potential. They just have, and they have a lot of also problems uh, up there way up high of uh, landslides and so on. They have to try to prevent that. But these kinds of buildings are very inefficient. You could have, again, kind of slopes buildings set into the slopes here, perhaps, uh, in the back there on the left. And you don't need to have this kind of, oh, I'm, I'm standing there being a hero, paying a lot of taxes on that property. If you're set into the hill, you pay very little tax. You keep the trees there, keep the vegetation there, keep it ecological. OK, so we have here, a, a, in that same valley, we have some kind of dam, some kind of structure. And I'm going to propose that instead of doing that, you do this. This is an idea from Marcel Duchamp, uh, where he had, if you remember the wheel, you use that wheel, and I'll show you a bit in some slides. Was, you may think it's funny, but it's actually quite serious. Um, what happened is that a French engineer developed this kind of rotary wheel, which has up to 90% efficiency vis-a-vis -vis falling water. So an American engineer developed a way to use turbines, which has about 95% efficiency, so 5% more efficient. But the American idea ruins the ecosystem. And you ruin the water system, and you ruin the fish. So this undershot water wheel, developed by a French engineer, engineer named Paul Soleil, which reje was rejected in 1905 as a way to do things, could be adopted now in Liechtenstein as a way to do things, as a, as a principle of, uh, instead of having dams with turbines, we saw some yesterday, you have water wheels. This kind of curve is called a Poncelet curve, mounted, I would say, on, on moving forks, and I'll show that in a second, the, uh, inspired by Duchamp. And so that system could be done throughout Liechtenstein, so you have water power throughout Liechtenstein with lightweight water wheels, not heavy dams. Uh, the thing I just showed you was rather, well, I'll show you now coming up, is a reservoir for a heavy dam. And it's been notably inefficient. And as you come down, the water comes down to the edge, and it kind of gets blocked, it gets stagnant, it fills up with weed, uh, the fish die, there's no washington. It's a more or less dying ecosystem, and we can see that with a satellite, and we say, well, you have to pay a high tax for that. How do we reduce the taxes? By improving it, by having that kind of structure in front of the dam, where you have a series of suspended water wheels, from bicycle forks throughout the entire dam structure so the water can go through, the fish can get through, the nutrients can stay alive, and the river is not blocked and dying, but is living and moving. That is an, a region where every house here in your classic uh, kind of Swiss, or I guess Liechtenstein Chalet Manor, could have its own water wheel system. And uh, there's, a, again, the inspiration. Thank you, Marcel, 1913. And there's the, the kind of follow-through lightweight structures, which you can buy at the corner store for maybe 10,000 bucks, put it by your house, and have electricity whenever you want on demand. And that's the kind of stream that occurs throughout this whole slope. We just photographed one, but I mean, many of the kind of streams are available. They're flowing all the time. You, you put, a, in this case, about four or five of these water wheels, lightweight things, and they can collect energy night and day, whatever you like and you don't have to bother with being hooked into imports. And now we're going to go into the other valley, and you see this enormous opportunity for having this array of water wheels throughout the entire valley. And we're coming down now. We're going to end this, the story here a bit by saying, gee, uh, here is Liechtenstein. You've got the big mountains, big slopes, big potential, big energy flowing down to this mud flat, and the buildings are in the wrong place. The buildings should be off the mud flat, into the hills, maybe buried into the hills when the slope structures that are already pioneered by the Swiss military, so it's a known technology. And you have the land left open for growth of biofuel as well as the, the agricultural products you have already in the country. And this way, Liechtenstein can stay going for the next 250 years. The technique is satellite imaging. Uh, you may know I've done a lot of that stuff for mass media. The idea now is to do it for this country. 
Um, I can say with some kind of pride that it's kind of a fatherland for me. They call it fatherland because my ancestors come from around here my, on my father's side. So, hey, service for the fatherland, satellite image to the, entire of, the entirety of uh, Liechtenstein. Every pixel has a value. We take satellite data from, say, 1986. The whole area can be surveyed with one satellite data frame. We can get it down to five meters by five meters. We can say this has a value 1986. What is the change in value between then and now? We will charge you money for that change. You build a house and it's on a roof. Uh, the roof is doing nothing. We ch you pay a lot of money. If you have a big garden, you pay less money. If you have an ecosystem, you pay no money. And you have this kind of taxation going on throughout Liechtenstein. And the reason being is not just Liechtenstein that benefits, it's the Rhine River. We're part of the Rhine. If you see there now the mouth of the Rhine coming into the Atlantic Ocean or North Sea, there is your bioproductivity that we need in the ocean. And as you increase the bioproductivity and wealth and variety of the ecosystem here and not have houses squatting on those plains, you will be improving the bioproductivity of the whole region of the North Sea. So Liechtenstein can become a world power, not just be in a tiny corner, but impacting all of England, Germany, Holland, Norway, Denmark. Okay?